This is part two of incorporating motion with flash photography. And what we're gonna do is jump into Lightroom, grab our XFS files and process the images, then go to Photoshop to show you some simple compositing techniques on how you can take these six layers and quickly combine them into this final image that you see here. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Welcome back. We're here on Adorama TV. And if you've missed episode one, we'll be sure to go back to part one because that's where we talked about exactly how these frames were captured. So this is the final image, but there's actually six frames that went into this image and that's what we're going to be working on here. So to learn how they were composed, how they were lit, how they were shot, go back to part one. We're going to focus here just on the post-production of these images. This is a great place to pause, by the way, and go ahead and make sure that you download the exercise files. I'm going to include the raw exercise files with this tutorial. You guys can download them for free and follow along as we work through and create the final image. Okay, so let's dive in. You should have six different raw files, and I'm going to break this process down into a simple eight step kind of process and framework. It's, it's really gonna be quite easy and intuitive. But step number one is to dial in your look. And you can do this however you like. You can use presets, you can process by hand, fine tune it to what you like. Let me just show you how I would quickly do it. I'm gonna run through the settings as well. I'm gonna grab one of the images that has kind of my subjects lit appropriately and uh, has the right expressions and everything. So, Cause I'm really processing this for skin tone, right? So I'm gonna press D to jump in the develop module. And from here, I'm gonna use a preset from the Visual Flow library. Now granted, if you don't use this, that's totally fine. Cause I'm gonna walk through all the settings in just a moment. So in the modern pack, which kind of has a nice warm look, I'm gonna apply flash. And what this does is it kind of compensates for incorporating flash into a photograph while adding the warmth and kind of final look to the image. But let me show you what it's doing. It's pulling the highlights down a bit while it's pulling the whites as well. Cause when we use a hard edge flash, we often get a lot of highlights and whites that can be kind of a little bit overly intense. So it's pulling those down a bit while also balancing the shadows a little bit. It's gonna go in and add a nice tone curve. This S curve is gonna pull down the shadows while raising kind of overall exposure and in the highlights. And then we go down and we start tweaking HSL. All of these tweaks are to help adjust color a little bit to get to more natural skin tones. And the primary ones are really down here in the saturation. So you'll see that the reds and oranges are being pulled down a little bit. This is because again, oftentimes when we flash an image, we end up pulling down exposures and it can end up with a lot more dark and rich skin tone. So we're kind of muting that just a little bit, muting some of the overall color so we don't end up with something that's kind of over the top. And you'll see a little bit of luminance adjustments. But again, if you guys want, you can pause the video, dial in all these settings if you wanna follow it to the T, or if you just wanna kind of dial in your own, that's totally fine too. The main thing is get to your final look. A big part of this look is creating the split toning where we're adding a bit of warmth into the highlights and a bit of warmth as well into the shadows. And these are kind of these orange tones over here on the side, just a little bit that's balanced over the highlight side. That's really it for most of the work that's being done with this preset. So from there, all I'm gonna do is just kind of adjust my temperature. I'm gonna pull temperature down maybe a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of tint to it just to get a little bit more magentas. I'm even gonna close off this left side of the panel just for one second so I can see the image a little bit larger, okay? And I have a, a fun idea. So check this out. I've created these little presets for dodge and burn filters. Uh, they come inside of the Visual Flow tools, but it's easy to create your own tools. All this is, is if you click this button, it ends up dropping in a radial filter. If I press Shift M, I can select my radial filter tool. And if I press that, it's just a 0.5 burn that gets dropped in. And we actually created another video on kind of five things that you can do inside of Lightroom that you might not know. Check that one out because we detail out all of this fun stuff, easy things you guys can do for your workflow. But the nicety about this is now I don't have to go and go to the radio filters and kind of do this manually and dial in the exposure. All I do is click a button. This is for a full burn where it's going to burn the whole image. This is for a narrow burn where it's going to burn just a small section. And now rather than doing all that manually, I kind of just bring this over and here's a fun little trick. I can hold down Alter Option while I'm hovering over this pin 
And if I drag to the left, it's going to strengthen the effect. If I drag to the right, it's going to reduce the effect. So I'm going to strengthen the effect a little bit. And here's another little fun tip. If I actually go up here to my temperature, this is where the image is being affected, right? It's, it's pulling everything in the exposure down, and it's not affecting the center of the image. So if I actually lower my temperature outside, what ends up happening is it sort of cools the tone outside the image. And then as we drop into the center, it's a little bit warmer. I usually like to keep this a little bit on the more subtle side. So I'll, I'll probably keep this between negative 10 and negative 20. But it has a fun kind of look to it. And if you apply this in a similar way that the image is lit and it's subtle, it's not going to look like it's kind of standing out in any way. It's not going to look unnatural. So let's say that I like this right here. I might add a little bit of clarity, maybe a tiny bit in my exposure just for my subjects. And I'm pretty happy with where this is at now. So now I've got my look dialed in. Let's go to step two. Step two is to sync that look or the process settings across all of the images, including the plate shot, okay? That shot with the, the, the tripods and everything removed. Sorry, the, the light stance. So we really haven't done anything too crazy to the image. And the cool thing about this is we can also process the final image just a little bit further however we like, okay? So for right now, this looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is press Control A or Command A with this image highlighted. So it's funny, I think the technical term for this is these are all these selected images, right? The one that's highlighted is the most selected image. I was like, maybe we can call that the key image or the key selected, I don't know. But it's the most selected. Okay, so with the most selected image highlighted, I'm gonna press Control Shift S or Command Shift S on a Mac. You're gonna press Check All. We have the identical shot set up between every one of these images, right? So we can check all and press synchronize. Because we're on a tripod, we don't need to worry about movement. We don't need to worry about anything. We want that same exact setting. And we shot this manually so we know that as we work from image to image, the shot is identical. We don't have changes in exposure, nothing. That's the goal here. And that's key. Because with that, we're moving to step three. We're going to select all images. Again, Control A or Command A to do that. Right click and you're going to go edit in and we're going to say open as layers in Photoshop. Now this is where depending on the resolution of these files, depending on the speed of your computer, it might take a couple moments as Photoshop opens up and loads these into individual layers within Photoshop. Okay, we're in Photoshop. The images have been layered. Now we're going to go to step four. We're going to select all of our layers. So this is just a good practice, even when you're shooting on a tripod, to select all the layers. You're going to go to Edit, and then we're going to go to Auto Align, and we're going to align those layers automatically. Because even when you're working on a tripod, there's sometimes subtle shifts, especially when you're pressing the shutter button. There can be subtle shifts from image to image. I want Photoshop to take care of the work for me and just automatically align everything. You're going to see why in just a moment. The better you kind of shoot this entire series, the more it's going to be just a matter of simply masking and just removing certain things. You don't have to do any other Photoshop work. It's going to be really easy. It makes your simple composite very simple. Okay, so that's just going to take a moment. So it's done the work and it's aligned my layers. So step five is to find the layer. Again, if you know the number, that's great. But find the layer that has the ideal expression. Okay, so usually if you just hold down Alt or Option, uh, you can actually click the eyeballs just to solo or select that individual layer. And usually I'll just kind of flip through and see like which layer do I like the most. Um, and I'm going to say probably, yeah, I think... I don't like this one with the person right behind him, her, because it's going to get a little bit difficult. Um, I think this layer is probably the one that I like the most, uh, this one right here. So what we're going to do is with that layer selected, we're going to drag it up to the top. The next step is then to find the plate layer and put it right underneath, okay? So again, we're just going to grab the plate layer, which is this bottom one, and we're going to place this right underneath. And I'm going to show you why, because in step six, what we're going to do is actually remove the light stands from the image, okay? This is where I do like working with a Wacom tablet inside of Photoshop, but with simple composites, if you want to just use your mouse, you totally can. All we're going to do here is you have a couple options. Behind them, we have this shot right here where we could just paint in. If we wanted to, we could just paint in them. Or we can essentially 
paint out everything that we don't want in the frame, right? So let me just show you with how we have it organized right now. All we're gonna do is add a mask and you're just gonna select a black brush. So press B to select your brush. You can press D to flip your palette back to default, X to flip the, the default palette to black. And with normal and opacity at 100%, flow set to 100%, all you're gonna do is paint black where these stands are. This is where you begin to see the magic of getting this right. Because with our tripod, with shooting this right, with having our layers aligned, well, removing the stands becomes literally a five to 10 second job, right? We've just removed the stands and we're good to go. There's a person right here and I actually wanna keep him in there, okay? So if I wanna remove this car, I totally can as well. So I'm gonna remove the car just to give me kind of a blank palette to work with. And as we're doing this, we're just revealing the underlying layer behind, right? And I kind of liked on the plate layer, there was also these other people walking. I thought that's cool. So let's just kind of show the plate layer. So when we look at this mask, if I press Alter Option and click the mask, what you see is we're basically just showing this layer in these select spots where it's black, right? Black will conceal the existing layer white will reveal, right? So black is concealing the existing layer and showing the layer below, which is this one. So all you really need to make sure is when you click this mask, hold Alter Option to click it just to see it, just make sure the areas that should be completely blacked out are blacked out. If you wanna zoom in, do a little bit of fine tuning, you totally can. But now this is as simple as it's gonna get. All you're gonna do is Alt click wherever you want. Let's say we find an area of, of motion that we kind of like, like, oh, I like that motion right there. Um, there's more people in this shot. Oh, there's a cool car on this one, right? So what I'm gonna do is grab one of the motion layers and throw it to the top. So step seven, as desired, grab the motion layers and put them on top of the image. And what we're gonna do is the exact same thing. This go around, I'm gonna hold down Alter Option when I click the mask, because now it's gonna invert the mask to black. So we're not gonna show anything. And then this is where I usually like to dial down my flow just a little bit. So I'll bring the flow down to like 30, 40%, and I'll start to paint white. So press X to bring back the white, and you kind of start painting in motion where you want it over the image. Now remember, everything's aligned, right? So with this opacity and kind of the way we're doing it, we kind of just nicely drag across, and if we get a little bit too much in one area, I can press X and just kind of remove it. And we kind of just nicely paint this in in layers as we kind of add the motion to our shot. And because we're doing it this way, it has a very nice and kind of natural look to the way that we're adding motion to the image. I'm gonna go down and grab another layer. So I like this layer, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this layer on top. Same thing, you're gonna repeat this step seven until you've added whatever motion you wanna add to the shot. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the layer by pressing the eyeball, hold down Alter Option, click the mask. With white, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint and we're gonna kind of, I kind of like keeping some of these people in the background a little bit. So I'm gonna keep the people in the background. I like having that motion in there. Now, as we get over here, we start to see the stand, right? So press X and conceal the stand. Okay, we can press X and kind of uh, reveal this person walking by a little bit more. We can press X again to kind of show this layer. And we're just gonna flip back and forth between these layers to kind of get this perfect motion. Now remember this kind of screw up shot, right? So look at this. In this one, we had this screw up shot where the car is just driving right over. Why the heck would I wanna keep this? Because you can still do fun things with this. So if I hold the Alter Option and click this layer again, so now I've created a mask, it's blacked out. What I'm gonna do now is just bring my flow like all the way down, okay? And then I can sit here and paint just with a very light flow kind of across the whole image in areas that I just wanna add a little bit of extra motion to the shot, right? So it doesn't have to be like, if I go, oh, that's too much, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna erase this off, okay? And this is super easy and, and just fun to do because you can kind of tweak exactly how you want this and just keep playing until you get to this perfect level where all of the motion is added to the image. So what I think I wanna do for this one is actually, I'm gonna just, select this entire layer, or you can just delete this actually, it's probably easier to delete it and add another black layer. So just add another black layer. And what I'm gonna do is make this motion that actually extends across the bottom of the frame. So like kind of across their, their bodies and areas that I wanna have like a little bit of, of blur, right? So we can kind of have this be right across the bottom and make sure that we're not covering them up too much. And then maybe have it extend like over here 
Okay. Wherever we feel like. Actually, I just like it across the bottom. I think I'm going to just keep it there. Let's see this last layer, if there's anything here that we want to add. And I don't think so. I think it, it looks pretty good where it's at. Okay, so we can choose to leave things off or add things the way we want. But now we're just going to save this out. And my last and final step, step eight, would be go back into Lightroom. And if you want to do any other tweaks to it, you totally can, right? We can essentially reprocess it. If you want to make it a little bit brighter, you want to make fine tuning and tweaks, rebake it, however you'd like to do, you can make those final tweaks right here. So that's it. Now let me show you the fun of these types of advanced lighting and photography techniques, especially when it comes to working with clients. The typical photographer is going to walk up and they're going to shoot this image, right? This is the natural light shot. Granted, you're not going to have the flashes in the shot, but this is the natural light shot of what this scene would look like. But when you take these techniques into a shoot and you come back to your clients with an image like this, it's a standout image. And for clients that appreciate dramatic images like this, it really makes your work stand out from every other person. And I'm not saying, by the way, to not shoot the natural light stuff, to not shoot everything else, but to have these types of images and these skills in your toolkit makes you stand out from everybody else who is just shooting kind of that same walk-up shot, all right? So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys enjoyed this two-part series, again, we have more of the best A to Z training in photography from everything from learning the camera to mastering lighting to post-production, all of that, shooting weddings, portraiture, engagements, posing, all that stuff is on srlounceworkshops.com. In the meanwhile, you guys can follow us here on Adorama TV. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment below, tell us what you think. You can also follow us on at SRLounge or me personally at PyGersa. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.